Canada, Germany, Finland, and France are just a few of the countries that have restricted the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine due to the high amount of cases of blood clots that presented themselves in patients after they received the AstraZeneca vaccine. With that being said, these restrictions implemented usually allow patients under the age of 55 to receive the AstraZeneca vaccination. However, as of April 7th, 2021, there have been 169 reported cases of cerebral venous sinus thrombosis in patients that received the AstraZeneca vaccine. So is it safe for patients under 55 years old to be receiving this vaccine? Today on NeuroPsyQ, we are going to be talking about what cerebral venous sinus thrombosis is, how it might be happening, and whether or not the AstraZeneca vaccine is actually causing cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. So sit tight, stay tuned, let's roll the intro. Welcome back to NeuroPsyQ, the best place on YouTube to increase your neuroscience IQ. Before we get started with today's video, I just want to remind you folks that this channel is not a medical channel. We are not here to give you medical advice, so if you are experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 or cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, please do call your doctor immediately or visit the hospital. That being said, let's get started. As I mentioned earlier, the AstraZeneca vaccine has been linked to 169 cases of blood clots in the brain. It also has been linked to 53 other cases of blood clotting out of the approximately 34 million vaccinations that have been given to date. Nonetheless, this vaccine is still backed by the World Health Organization and it is being delivered in countries all across the world. That being said, several countries have restricted the use of the vaccine to patients under 55 years old, saying that the benefit of the vaccine outweighs the possibility of harm. Possibly the greatest ethical dilemma that doctors face on a day-to-day -day basis is the dilemma of do no harm. With them constantly having to analyze the risks and benefits of different treatments to decide the best way to treat their patient. That being said, whether or not the AstraZeneca vaccine should be used in younger people is questionable, especially with the fact that COVID-19 serves less risk to the less vulnerable population of adolescents with young people being less likely to experience severe symptoms from COVID-19, should they be exposing themselves to a vaccine that may put them at risk of cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. Cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, or CVST, is a blockage of the cerebral venous sinuses in the brain by a blood clot. So within our brain, we have these protective layers called the meninges that are covering our brain. And there are actually three layers, with the uppermost layer being referred to as the dura mater. Within the dura mater, there are the dural venous sinuses, which serve as a collection point for blood that flowed through the brain. So typically, the veins from our brain drain into the dural venous sinuses, and then they exit the brain via the jugular vein and return to the heart so they can go through pulmonary circulation, become reoxygenated, and then circulate through the rest of our body. In a case where we have a blood clot blocking this flow, what happens is the blood builds up on the other side of the clot. So now that the blood is no longer able to exit the brain, we have an increase in intracranial pressure, which leads to the symptoms that a victim of CVST would experience. The symptoms vary depending on where the pressure is being placed throughout the brain. Some of the symptoms include headache, abnormal vision, weakness on one side of the body, and this condition can lead to stroke and hemorrhaging in the brain. Now. CVST is a rare disorder, and when I say rare, I mean that there are only about five cases per every million people each year. 
So with that being said, in this case where we've had a persistent amount of cases with the AstraZeneca vaccine, can we conclude that the AstraZeneca vaccine is actually causing CVST? Well, a lot of the signs point to yes, there are three things we need to consider to establish causality in science. The first one being having a strong correlation between variables. The second one being temporal precedence, and that means that the cause and the effect come in sequence to one another. And the third one being an absence of confounding variables. And this is perhaps one of the most difficult things to eliminate in science, especially in the case with vaccinations where we are taking the general population and we lack a control, so we don't know what other variables may be affecting the outcome. For instance, some of the risk factors for CVST include problems with blood clotting, so things like sickle cell anemia or beta thalassemia major, things like heart disease, iron deficiency, infections, dehydration, head injury, or in newborns being born to an infertile mother, could also be risk factors for CVST. If one does develop CVST, they do present with the symptoms like headache, blurred vision, fainting, loss of consciousness, loss of movement, sometimes seizures present themselves as well, and coma can be a result of CVST. So how would a doctor treat CVST? Well, the number one thing is we need to get rid of that blood clot that is causing the buildup of pressure in the brain. So the way to do that is to treat the patient with blood thinning medication. Blood thinners are also known as anticoagulants and this can include drugs like heparsin and warfarin. So to prevent CVST, it's very similar to heart attack prevention. What we can do for ourselves in the long term is make sure we are living a heart healthy lifestyle by exercising and maintaining a healthy diet. The last thing we're going to touch on is why this might be happening as a result of the AstraZeneca vaccine. There is a growing body of evidence that shows that viruses can influence the amount of clotting that occurs in our body. Think of it, when a virus infects your body, your immune system becomes activated, we have an attack on our body from a foreign invader, which can lead to inflammation, and all this stress on our body may influence the coagulation cascade. The coagulation cascade is basically just a pathway that leads from one point to the point of the blood clotting. So for instance, the trigger could be a wound which promotes blood clotting or inflammation which promotes blood clotting or now we are seeing that viruses can even lead to things that promote blood clotting. On a day-to-day -day basis, our body has to maintain a balance between clotting and breaking down blood clots. But if we throw this balance off, then we can have the buildup of clots in our body, which can lead to things like CVST. So if a vaccine intends to activate our immune system in order to prepare us for a possible viral infection, well then perhaps our body is responding to the vaccine in a similar way. Now, while this is just speculation, it is a way that we can attempt to explain what might be happening if AstraZeneca is actually causing these clots. Nonetheless, it is still difficult to establish causation, despite the fact that we are unsure whether or not there is a tight-knit relation between the AstraZeneca vaccine and CVST. Those are some of the facts that we know. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And as always, stay happy and healthy. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time on NeuroPsyQ.